Great, um, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to join everyone this morning from Tajikistan. I thought, off, I, thought I would start off uh, quickly doing a bit of geography for everyone who's probably a bit less familiar with Tajikistan than other uh, South Asian country countries uh, participating here today. Uh, so we'll zoom in a little bit. So I just have a, a quick map. It's a Google satellite map of the road from Dushanbe to Kathmandu. Uh, Dushanbe is located, is the capital of Tajikistan, located in Central Asia. Uh, we're a former Soviet Union country, just north of Afghanistan, landlocked, like Nepal, uh, and it's 93% uh, mountainous. So we also share uh, many inland glaciers. And you'll see um, we're on the same mountain range, so the beginning of the Himalayas and just a bit closer. Only a 40 hour drive, according to Google directions, <laughs> through Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, Tajikistan is a Feed the Future focused country, uh, the only one in Central Asia. Um, some quick facts about the country. It's a population total, 8 million, and we're focused in the southwest corner of Tajikistan, uh, bordering Afghanistan. There's 1.4 million people in our zone of influence, so the population is, is much fewer than many of our, the countries we've been discussing today, such as India, even Nepal, is a highly populated country compared to Tajikistan. Uh, remittances is also um, a huge contributor to household incomes as well as the GDP. Uh, the World Bank has estimated that remittances in Tajikistan represent over 50% of the GDP. So GDP is around just over 7 billion and remittances are estimated at 3.5 billion dollars per year. So a huge contribution. Uh, it's the poorest country in the former Soviet Union, and it's the only country after the Soviet Union collapsed uh, or was dissolved in 1991 that um, suffered a civil war. So for about five years after 1991, they went through a prolonged period of civil war. So many of the Soviet legacy institutions completely collapsed uh, after that period, and they didn't go through the same type of land, and other structural reforms as quickly as other countries did as they emerged from the Soviet system. Uh, this is our, just a snapshot of our Feed the Future multi-year strategy. Um, like all other focused countries, our high level objectives are to reduce poverty and improve the nutritional status of particularly women and children under five. We're doing so through a, a three-pillared approach, direct assistance to farmers, building capacity in local systems, as well as po policy support for the government, particularly in areas of land and water sector reform. Uh, this is just a quick snapshot of our high level targets. The population sector level outcome targets we'll be focusing on are increasing women's dietary diversity, uh, increasing the prevalence uh, of children receiving a minimum acceptable diet, as well as increasing the prevalence of exclusive breastfeeding, uh, working through the thousand days approach and the scaling up nutrition sun initiatives. Uh, Taj the government of Tajikistan joined the sun initiative just recently, uh, last September, September 2013. Uh, and these are some of our, our outputs and targets. What I thought, instead of, um, so our portfolio, like many programs here, is, is fairly vast. We have a land program, a water program. We have an agricultural extension program with MIAS, the Modernizing Extension Advisory Services. We have a behavior change and communication nutrition program. So many programs similarly tackling all of the fundamental agricultural nutrition challenges that we face as development uh, practitioners. But I thought for this audience, I'd pull out just one or two projects that were of, of quite of, of relevance, though they represent smaller portions of our program budget. One is a relatively new project. Uh, it's the Potato Project to Improve Food Security in Khatlan. And we're working with the International Potato Center, uh, which is a CGIAR uh, Institute, SIP, based in Lima, Peru, but with offices in New Delhi, uh, as well as Tashkent, Uzbekistan. So we work closely with the office in Tashkent uh, to introduce new varieties of potatoes. Uh, one that we have particularly excitement about is fortified uh, with iron and zinc. Uh, another variety we're 
we're demonstrating is a, uh, a variety that takes less cooking time to save energy uh, as an energy efficiency um, intervention. Uh, we're also working through GAIN, the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, uh, on a flower fortification support program. So looking at partnerships with the private sector flower mills, uh, policy support and advocacy through scaling up nutrition, working with the government of Tajikistan, as well as media campaigns to build demand for flower fortification of essential micronutrients. Um, no right now, the flower in Tajikistan is simply not fortified. Um, people don't know about fortification or the benefits. It was fortified during the Soviet period, and there's, there aren't the cultural taboos or there's nothing against fortification. So we're really trying to work through games um, in a voluntary fortification model uh, to see if we can incentivize and build demand uh, at the same time for fortification among the population. Uh, and then we also, um, I wanted to just point out there's a, a winter wheat variety of, of seed that we introduced in 2008, Krasnodar 99, which is developed in Ukraine. And this is a um, Interesting, because so wheat is the primary staple in the diet of Tajikistan. And we introduced this seed variety, uh, which has properties of, it uh, has some rust resistancy, and it's a higher, it produces a higher quality flour for baking. So it's quite popular, uh, especially uh, among women who are the primary bed bread bakers in Tajikistan. But I wanted to bring this out in our discussion of innovations and scaling up. This was introduced uh, in a project to support water users associations uh, in 2008. And the project was primarily building capacity for managing uh, and planning irrigation sector activities, but the farmers also wanted some agro-technologies that would improve their productivity um, at the same time as they were improving their water management. And it was almost, um, I think 600 metric tons of seed were distributed as a demonstration during that project. And we didn't follow it afterwards. It was just a one-off, here's some seeds. We think this variety has, you know, has a lot of potential. In 2012, the government of Tajikistan Ministry of Agriculture thanked USAID for increasing the efficiency of wheat yields by 50%. And I was, we were sitting in the mission at, at the time, and we were like, well, what did we do? <laughs> because we hadn't been tracking this really critical and important demonstration and innovation, and all of a sudden, this actually has had a profound impact on food security, efficiency of land use in Tajikistan. So I wanted to bring it out as an example of what you know, technology and innovations are capable of, uh, and kind of the little parts of our programs that utilize them may have long-lasting uh, impact down the line that we're not even, uh, not even tracking. Um, this is just a schema of our Feed the Future zone, and these are the water users associations that we support. Uh, they cover the majority of irrigated and, and arable land. And then just finally for the last slide, I wanted to draw out two of the concepts in scaling that we're looking at and we're hoping to discuss further at this conference. Uh, the first is in improved dairy feeding concentrates and the second is in extended season vegetable production under plastic. And then very last, if I might, if I might take a moment. So when I was arriving to, to Kathmandu just two days ago, there's these wonderful signs when you walk in giving you the history of, of, uh, of Nepal. And one of the signs, the you know, largest mountains, etc. One of the signs said that remittances were the second largest contributor to the economy. Of course, our guide on a quick hike yesterday with Mofat said it was number one, so let's see. But the point is, you know, remittances play a huge role, not just in household economies, but the economy at large. And I think as we think about innovations, take up, and scale, and we really need to think about and perhaps learn from our uh, colleagues in Latin America who've been thinking about remittance as a contribution to the economy for a long time, how we can really incorporate this into our programs to see what we can do. So thanks very much. Great. To learn more, please visit agrilinks.org 
and feedthefuture.gov. And to learn more about this mission's activities, please visit www.usa.gov slash Tajikistan.